With Lost Sands firmly in the rearview mirror, a new world altering decision is on the horizon for Sea of Thieves. This was confirmed back during the results stream for Lost Sands and has been reinforced by the Gamescom podcast from last month. But what really is the decision we're going to be taking? We'll go through when it's likely to arrive, who will be involved and what the decision might be. We have a few clues already so let's glean over them and see what we might be fighting over next. Briefly, the outcome of Lost Sands was a disappointing loss for the Reaper's Bones. With Golden Sand saved by Merrick and the forces of Athena's fortune, the trading companies remain firmly planted on the Sands of Gold. With the Pirate Lord promising to take a greater interest in the defence of the outpost, Flameheart equally will strike back even harder. I think this might be our first clue. I did previously think that the Sovereigns may go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the Reaper's Bones, and I still think this is on the table. The NPCs of the Sovereigns are happily spewing their disdain for the Reapers, while remaining keen to work with the other trading companies including Athena's fortune. This is because they accept their loot and deliver it to the mysterious stranger. It also makes sense in the context of the Reaper's objectives. If they hate the trading companies, I can guarantee you that they hate the sovereigns even more so. So I do think this will come into play eventually, especially when creating a moral dilemma. I also think the Dark Brethren versus Athena or Reapers would have been a great decision. However, we have just had a reintroduction of the Dark Brethren and I think they are the clear evil faction. They truly want to end the pirate's life where all their members have been destroyed by it. Wanda was rejected by Flameheart, Duke was kicked out of the Bilge Rats, and Amaranth's motives are not so clear. As much as Flameheart does bring bloodshed and war, he still does believe in true freedom, even if he has to break a few eggs to make that omelette. This is why we can still choose to join the Reaper's Bones. The choice is also confirmed to be binary, so only two sides will be available to choose from. So yeah, it's highly likely it will remain Athena's fortune versus the Reaper's Bones. And I for one, I'm happy to stoke the flames of that war once again. So when is this coming? With the next adventure arc starting in a week, named a Siren's Prize, will this be it? No. We know from the title alone that this will be something to do with the Sunken Kingdom, and it even appears in the background of this image. Adventure 8 will be the continuation of this story arc, so I expect something in the vein of Forts of the Forgotten or Forsaken Hunter. Adventure 9 will be the climax of this arc and is likely to feature a spectacle set piece with co-op on multiple crew features. As Lost Sands start the second arc, then it's safe to assume this will be Adventure 10. This is scheduled to release around December time. This would also be a good way to keep the engagement throughout the season and over Christmas, much in the same way Lost Sands did. Not to mention, Mike also states the narrative ties in with Season 8. Again, this could be the decision that leads into Season 8, but he goes on to mention how we'll see our seasonal narrative tie in with adventures. When you think about it that way too, Adventure 10 will be our last adventure this year, and the only one to occur this year in Season 8. I would be surprised if this was outside of this time frame, as we know it's happening this year. Obviously, it can be delayed, but I doubt that will be the case. Now we've cleared that up, what will be our decision? In the podcast, Chris Davies dropped some CFTs on us. This really made me feel like we might be fighting over Golden Sands again. He deliberately mentioned that Golden Sands falling again is not out of the question. I don't think that will necessarily be the focus of the adventure, as I think the Save Golden Sands crew might be pretty pissed if it did fall after all. Although the outcome will be revealed over time, it might be thrust into the game later this year. On the other hand, they did mention again that if your house was broken into, you'd take extra precautions to make sure it doesn't happen again. Golden Sands will clearly get some better fortifications, but why would that be the case if we weren't fighting over it? What's to say then that it won't be more islands and not just Golden Sands? Could it be a group of them or even the whole region? They did indeed suggest that Flameheart would look to strike back harder, so instead of focusing on planting relics at Golden Sands, he instead wants to take over the whole of the Shores of Plenty. Moreover, Rey is being keen to emphasise this decision being even more meaningful than Lost Sands. The battle for the Shores of Plenty could not only suggest that, but also dial up the stakes to 11. We can all agree that it's a fan favourite region, even if I personally like the Ancient Isles more. I mean, think about it. Flameheart has an interest in Golden Sands. It could be due to its historical significance, it could be tactical, it could have significance to him personally. But we can't ignore why he chose Golden Sands. He had a reason for it. His motives aren't as clear as just removing the trading companies. Otherwise, we'd have to fight over the six other outposts in the game. This hypothesis would also bake into the two outcomes. If the Reapers won, then that would be a base of operations for the ongoing invasion. But if they lose, Golden Sands becomes the base of operations for Athena's fortune, while Flameheart surrounds them. It makes a lot of sense from a story standpoint and a development standpoint. Both outcomes would have to be developed in six months, so Adventure 10 would have to apply to both of those outcomes. 
Obviously, this is huge speculation, and I'm unsure if Rare would have us fight over a whole region, but Golden Sands was a very touchy subject, with the next decision being even larger. The only other thing I could see it being is deciding if Flame Art remains as a ghost or is resurrected into a new physical form. I'm not sure how I feel about this, and couldn't be sure that the right decision would be made by the community. Clearly the right answer would be resurrecting him. How would you guys feel about this if this was the decision point? Lastly, I would love for the votes to be decided through actual combat this time, not which side can min-max their voyages. That certainly decided the last one, with speedrunning points becoming the meta in the last few days. I did have quite a few combat encounters due to the Soul Flame rowboat, but this was almost always for stealing treasure from non-participants. I could probably count on one hand how many Golden Sand savers I ended up squaring up with. The next adventure needs to be based on PvP along with the voyages, that way this can really feel like a war. In a sense though, you could argue that each side was stockpiling supplies for round 2. You could steal quest items in the last one, but fighting someone was so inefficient compared to doing the quests. Possibly, Rare could add points for turning in emissary flags for each faction, with a turn in point at an Athena NPC for Reaper flags. Although, that would require people to reach Pirate Legend to opt into one side so it would probably be a bit biased. I'm sure Rare can think of a PvP based point system anyway. And of course I would love for the way we score points to be very clear from day one so we don't get mass hysteria and confusion like Golden Sands. So yeah, I for one am very excited to fly the flag for Flameheart again. This time I'll be trying my hardest to secure that win as Lost Sands was a bit of a black eye for me. Hopefully Captain Blubber takes the opposing side again so you can get some balanced propaganda, if you can really call it that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe for more like it and drop a like. Let me know what you think the next decision will be in the comments and who you'll side with. Thanks again for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.